Hello, 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 hello friends. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I wanted to talk about how to be a successful clerkship student or sort of tips and tricks on how to be a good clerkship student on your surgery rotation. I did my surgery rotation first um, in my second year, which I am halfway through at this point, um, and just wanted to share some things that I maybe wish I had done or things that I did that were received very well so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I do or you can go in a little bit more prepared. I will say that I started my surgery rotation, it was my very first rotation, so I was very nervous about sort of the culture of surgery. There's a lot of rumors out there about sort of attitudes and different personalities that you will receive in surgery. I will say at least at my institution, the surgery was wonderful. Um, the people that I worked with were all really great. Most of the attendings and fellows were amazing and I would say all of the residents were great. So I hope that's your experience, but if you go to the same school that I do, you do not need to worry about people being like super mean, save like one or two residents, fellows, attendings. There are some bad apples in the, the mix, but for the most part, everybody's really great. I would say for your own success, some things to do are prioritize sleep. If your program is like ours, we got up super early and sometimes got home very late. And so I would say sometimes my alarm would go off at three in the morning and then I would get home at 7 p.m. and need to go to bed by eight o'clock. Instead of trying to push through and just keep studying or be like, I need to get this many U World questions done today or this many Anki questions done today and then I'll sleep, I think I would recommend that you sleep instead. <laughs> and maybe that's not good studying advice. If you manage your time well and you're studying with UWorld, which is what I did, you should have time to finish all of the questions with plenty of time to spare. Do as much work as you can during the day while still being very present and active in what you're doing in the hospital. So if you do have downtime and the residents are working on notes, that's a good time for you to get a couple questions done or circle back and see some patients. But if you've done all of your work work and you're sort of sitting around, instead of looking for like chores to do, that might be a good time to prioritize getting a couple of questions done so that you can sleep. Allegedly, a good place to do some questions is if you arrive to the OR like way before the attending is there, when they're prepping the room, you've asked the nurses and the techs like what you can do to help. You've pulled your gloves, you've pulled your surgeon's gloves, you've pulled your resident's gloves. After that's over and you're just waiting for things to get started, if there's an extra computer in there, that's a good time to one, research the case if you haven't already, become familiar with the anatomy if you haven't already, do a couple of practice questions <laughs> um, and sort of like try to get ahead because every moment counts on surgery because it just really is very packed, I would say, schedule wise. That being said, on the topic of operations, if operating is your jam, try to be in the OR as much as you can. Otherwise, I think a lot of times there are ways for you to maximize your time out of the OR if you're not interested in operating. So uh, I would say when I was on emergency general surgery, I was on that rotation with someone who really didn't want to operate and I was someone who maybe wanted to be in the OR a little bit more. And so she was more focused on asking if she could help with dressing changes and asking if she could help with little things that needed to be done on the floor, whereas I would be in the OR. And that was a good balance to strike with my classmates, but also I feel like if you yourself are just, time moves really fast for me in the OR, but if that's not true for you, if there's ways for you to maximize your time out of the OR, try to do that for your sanity. But also when you are preparing for cases in the OR, I would say things to do would be to know sort of what's gonna happen in the surgery. I don't think that it's probably worth your time to memorize the surgical technique of what they're doing, but sort of know like if they're doing an anastomosis, like what parts are they connecting and what happens when you cut that part of the bowel out? Or if they're doing a roux and why, like what gets attached where and be sort of familiar with the anatomy, the blood supply, the nervous system, as far as leaving some time to study what's actually gonna be on your shelf later is concerned. Things that were helpful, there is a podcast 
or like a YouTube channel that sort of walks you through uh, some procedures. I found a really good one for renal transplant. So I can try to find the link and put it in the description and maybe they have other operations on there so that you can brush up on. Um, I would say as far as resources go for questioning, um, I'm not gonna say the P word because it's falling out of favor, but as far as like being asked questions in the OR or on rounds, um, surgical recall was like sort of helpful. I didn't use it a ton and I don't know if I if I just got lucky and like knew the answers or just was fine saying I don't know, but surgical recall has classically been good for people getting questions right when they're being questioned. I also used Castanias, I think. I think that's what it is. It's a little red book and then I used DiVirgilio's to study as well, which was helpful at least for clinical things on surgery. Things in the OR as far as etiquette is concerned, I would err on the safe side, err on the side of caution, do not touch anything. So like once you have your gloves on, you can ask if you can help to do things like help drape and that sort of thing. But I would watch it be done first and like ask very specifically, like, can I touch this? I did that a lot and maybe it was annoying, but I never broke sterile field. Knock on wood um, that I don't ever do that, but just, because I feel like that isn't an annoying thing that medical students can do, an annoying thing. It's like an easy mistake to make. So just be very cautious about what you're touching. And then I would say a really big skill for surgery is something you'll learn is like reading the room. There are times when the surgeries are like really picking up or something gets nicked that wasn't supposed to get nicked or they're in like a really complicated part of the surgery. Just try to get good at reading the energy in the room and not asking questions during those times or being like, if you do ask a question when it's tense, be like, but we, you can answer that after you're done with this sort of like preface it being like, I understand you're very busy. So let's talk after this. I'd love to debrief. Um, I think that comes in handy in a lot of scenarios, like in a trauma, even just like being able to read the room and be like, this maybe isn't the best time for a question. That comes in handy in all of your rotations. So the better you get at that, the the better things will be for you. As far as rounding on your patients um, and giving present good presentations go, I would say make sure you have like sort of a default list of questions that you ask everybody. Like, have you had a bowel movement? Are you passing gas? Are you urinating? Do you have pain at the site? Is the incision clean and dry? What did this drainage look like? Are the drains like draining clear fluid, serosanguinous fluid, is it milky, is it dishwater, like what's that look like? Those are sort of questions you ask everybody, um, but then also sort of pay attention to post-op day. So if it's post-op day one, like what sorts of things would cause a fever? Does this patient have a fever? Are you concerned about that? Post-op day two to five, two to three, five to seven, like what things, I think post-op day fevers are important to consider. Post-op day complications like PE, pneumonia, UTI, like the wind water, Wind, water, something else, wonder drug, etc. Know your post-op day fevers. Some things that are really important for planning in surgery is like when's the drain gonna get removed? When does a chest tube get removed? When do you change the chest tube to water seal? When do you advance feeds? in somebody who's had an abdominal surgery, meaning when do you change their diet from clears to liquids to soft to solid, like sort of understanding like where the progression is going will be important and like maybe impressive and being like, I think in my plan, this is a 67 year old female post-op day two from such and such operation, tolerating feeds on room air, we should advance her to a regular diet. And it's okay to be wrong, but that's like an example of like a very practical thing that you might be able to come up with and help the team decide. I would say the biggest thing attitude wise is be eager to do things, always be willing to do stuff, unless it's something really silly and they're just like trying to fill your time. I think it's okay to be like, but maybe not, I don't know. Eager to do stuff, asking for opportunities to do stuff. You, you'd be amazed at what you're allowed to do as a medical student safely for all of you out there who are not in medicine, safely. Um, if you just ask or ask to be shown how to do it so you can do it the next time. Some practical skills you can pick up on surgery if you ask and you're at an institution where they allow this, so you can place IVs, sometimes you can intubate, you can place Foley's certainly, um, NG tubes, OG tubes, you can like
like do drain stitches. You can like, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, you can pull drains, you can milk drains, lots of things that can be in your wheelhouse that weren't before. Other things to pay attention to if you're in an ICU, things to get, or just in general where people are hooked up to poles and stuff and bags are hanging. One thing that I feel like I developed not in my surgery rotation, but later in my medicine rotation, which I had second, was like paying attention to what the patient has attached to them. <laughs> like what are what is in the bag that's dripping into them? Is it saline? Is it antibiotics? Is it a presser? Like what's the dose of their presser. Those are important things to keep in mind when you are rounding on a patient and get just sort of like as much information as you can from looking at the patient and spending time with the patient as you can. Anticipation is a big, a big thing, I would say. So ways to, I guess, look really good um, on your surgery rotation is to anticipate needs. And so this would be like, an example, like in the OR, if they're tying, if they're like working on a tie, that would be a good time for you to say like heavy scissor. They give you the scissor, the scrub nurse or the scrub tech does, and then you're ready to cut the stitch when they're ready. Or if you know they're gonna need like a clean lap, you can say clean lap please and pass it to them. Or like just anticipate needs of others and it's okay to be wrong. Don't be annoying about it. Don't be like asking for crazy stuff or like handing things to the surgeon when the scrub nurse could do that because that's, they'll do it better than you and you probably don't know what they need so unless it's something you can actually do which I think like heavy scissor or clean lap or suction please like those sorts of things would be helpful for you to do um so anticipation is key i would say on rounds things like dressing changes being at least on emergency general surgery where i was being prepared with the supply so like on like day two or three of seeing the same patients you kind of know like okay they need two curlixes in saline wrung out in the sink and then they're gonna need this many bandages and then they're gonna need tape and then we're gonna need scissors for this thing like sort of anticipate that. Like once you've seen it once or twice, oop, you know what needs to be done. And when you have that ready, when you have your Curlex like ready to go and they're ready to pack it, it like speeds things up and you'll learn that like efficiency on rounds is really important to surgeons. So being prepared, being ready and being a helpful member of the team that at least makes it net even, um, hopefully net positive in like speeding things up or being a really good gatherer of knowledge or catching things that others miss, that's important. Those are things that are gonna help you be successful in the hospital as far as your surgery clerkship is concerned. I do have a video on what I did for surgery in my rotation and how I studied for my shelf exam, which I did end up passing, which I posted a little while ago. So I'll put that in the description as well. But as far as this video is concerned, um, I spoke from the heart. So I hope that this is helpful and um, best of luck on your surgery rotation. I loved it. The only things is I didn't eat a lot. I didn't exercise a ton. I did sleep pretty well. I think I actually slept the best of my entire life when I was on surgery because I was so tired all the time, like physically and mentally exhausted all the time. Um, some things like maybe a little bit of advice would be like if you want to, if you believe in melatonin, which it may be placebo, but it I'm okay with a placebo zonk, honestly. So um, I started taking melatonin every now and again, like if I had like a weird sleep schedule that day or if I knew I needed to be up super early and I was going to bed when it was still light outside, I would take some melatonin like two hours before bed or an hour before bed or something. You're gonna survive, it's gonna pass, even even if you hate it, there's lots of cool things that you can see in surgery. There's lots of things that you've read about that you didn't think existed in real life that you will encounter. So try to learn as much as you can, even if you don't love it, you're gonna do great. If you have any specific questions or questions about other things unrelated to this, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Bye.